Last we left you, 3-0 and Friday. We brought this out, Zeno. We brought no, put this it out. Put it away. Put it away. The last time you brought that out, I went on a, a seven-game losing streak. I don't want any part of that room anywhere near me. Okay? I'm sorry. Act I like don't want it on before. the floor. Act <laughs> like you've been there before. Okay? Well, we went. We have oh, yes. No, it was 3-0 and on Friday. And yes, combined, you and I both hit Best Bet winners on Sunday. Our yes. show Best Bet's coming up. By the way, you say act like we've been here before. We're here every Monday through Friday on Wager Talk TV. Thank you very much, Mark Zeno and myself. And we are looking to start the week as we are now back in the black for the month of July on the program. We're going to start the week, hopefully, the same way we ended last week. Mark, you are tackling the early game. Uh, I'll be looking at Paul Skeens at Houston in just a little bit. But you're tack- there is a doubleheader today, game one in the daytime at Camden Yards, Toronto, and Baltimore. And I believe you're expecting some runs in this one. Yeah, I mean, look, it's Zach Eflin's first start uh, for the Baltimore Orioles since being traded from Tampa Bay. Now, a lot of times you'd look to play on a pitcher like that. Hey, you know, he's in a spot now. He's going to a better team. He's in a playoff race. He's a good pitcher. He'll elevate. I don't know if that's the case for Zach Eflin against Toronto. Why? Because three times while with Tampa Bay, he faced Toronto this year. And he has a 6.23 ERA against the Blue Jays. He's given up 12 runs on 21 hits in 17 of the third innings. And the Blue Jays are batting 296 against him. I don't think that the jersey swap here changes anything for Zach Eflin's ability to not get out the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, It's one of those things, like, if he had one good start, maybe we would give a little pause. But, you know, I just – I don't believe that that's going to be the case here. I think that the Blue Jays can get to Eflin, and they will. On the flip side, Toronto's starting Yario Rodriguez, who's been a little bit of a mixed bag here um, through his his nine starts this year. Nothing too uber-impressive, 3.69 ERA, a 1.26 whip. But he's also facing an Orioles team that at home this year uh, is one of the most productive teams in all baseball. When we talk about runs scored, we talk about home runs hit, we talk about their ability to put the bat on the ball. Uh, that's Baltimore. Top 10 in runs scored, top 10 in OPS, top 10 in WRC plus when, it, when they play at home this year. So the Orioles kind of in that little bit of a funk, look like they're starting to snap out of it a little bit over the last couple of games. But I think we get runs scored here. All evidence by the fact that odds makers opened this game at nine across the board, knowing that this was the situation here. So Toronto's actually been going over a bunch as well lately. So they're a little bit inflated. Don't mind. We'll take the over nine here between Baltimore and Toronto. First game, three o'clock Eastern start, guys. Smash that like button if you're rolling with Zinno there. My half of double play, I, as I said just a few moments ago, we'll be taking a look at Pittsburgh with Paul Skeens on the mound at Houston. And I get the man has a mustache i get that he's got a hot girlfriend i get that he's pitched very well so far in his big league career By the way, i don't think Paul two things you don't should have, be this two big of a, you don't a mustache and a hot girlfriend uh, well, uh, well thank you very much i haven't fine beard and a hot wife okay there we go all right back to the game all right <laughs> let me tell you something paul skeens i don't care who i don't care if i got a mustache you got a mustache anyone listening has got a mustache paul skeens should not be this big of a favorite in houston the houston astros are the third highest scoring team at home in terms of runs per game only pit philadelphia and kansas city are putting up more so what now i've entered in my uh, we talked before the game i said my half was going to be houston plus one and a half that number skyrocketing it's up to minus 144 like as you were talking mark It just kept going up and up. So we've seen some money on Houston plus one and a half come in on the run line. Why is taking the one and a half, that little added insurance, a good idea? Well, how about this? Skeens has started 12 times, Mark, this year. Half of those games have been decided by one run. I don't care who wins as long as the game's decided by one run. Betting it this way. Also, oh, by the way, Pittsburgh, okay, has won five games since the All-Star break. Three of those five wins, including yesterday, have been by one run. So if if you're ju- if you're still if cool with the juice tolerance there, Houston plus one and a half. I think that's the this is crazy. Skeens, his velocity has been down the last couple starts. I'm rolling with the better team, Houston over the full nine plus one and a half on the run line. Please comment down below with your favorite bets for Monday in Major League Baseball. Oh, by the way. Uh, you're getting more of me today 
here on the channel because I will be with our good friend Drew Martin Betts on first pitch at 11 a.m. Eastern. Yes, everybody loves more BP. Uh, All right. You mentioned, oh, okay. Well, you're a little wishy washy there. I thought we were really friends. Okay. You mentioned, both, <laughs> you, were, you mentioned we were both off best bet winners on Sunday, Mark. You uh, cashed Arizona in the first five against the Pirates yesterday. What do you got on tap for Monday for the people? By the way, and I fully admit I'm not smart at baseball, but there's nothing that makes you feel better than making a first five bet wins and then watching the team lose the game. You feel like a damn genius. Like, I predicted this could happen. So that was the case yesterday for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So uh, good on us, uh, 4% winner. Uh, We'll have one play up on the site, guys. There's a lot on the board today that I'm actually interested in, but uh, we're going to keep this short and narrow here. So we'll get one play up for uh, the clients over at WT.Buzz slash MZ. Start to turn it back around after that bad losing streak we hit, guys. But it's all part of it. Just keep grinding away each and every day. WT.Buzz slash MZ. We'll have another uh, 4% play here up on the site tonight. You talked about that scenario, Mark, with uh, Arizona having the lead after five and then losing the game. Here's a scenario for you that I had on Sunday. After a long drive, I get home, I look at the score, see the LA Angels have won 8-6, a nice 4% best bet winner. Because I was driving, I had no idea they were down 6 nothing at one point in that game. So that was a pretty good feeling, too, knowing that uh, – hey, I know off the road. <laughs> yes, I, I would have. Yes, I, I may have been in the market for a girlfriend then at that point. Anyway, I digress – we are heading, there you see it right there, wt.bus slash bp. Check that out for all my plays on Monday. Let's talk about our show best bet here, Mark. Guardians and Tigers. We're talking about this show off air, and I was like, haven't these two teams played 72 times this month? Uh, it turns out 72 is a bit of, uh, I'm rounding up a little bit. They have bet eight times this month. They played two four-game series against one another. The Tigers actually have a winning record against the Guardians. If the Guardians don't see this through in the AL Central, it's going to be because of a subpar record against Detroit and the White Sox. But Tanner Bybee on the hill for Cleveland. Jack Flaherty still in a Detroit uniform for now. The opposing lineups are very familiar with these guys. You know, it is the third time this month each of these guys will be starting against their respective opponent. And we think that that familiarity leads to some more runs being scored than expected. Yeah, the familiarity breeds contempt and, and runs scored both. Uh, and by the way, final two team, final two meetings between these two teams of the regular season. So They're done facing each other. And I will say this much, guys. If you're going to make this play today, instead of making sure it said listed pitchers must start, just play action. Why? Because Mm -hmm. one of ten, if if, uh, Jack Flaherty gets pulled, the line is going to move and it's only going to go north. This total is set at seven, which is insanely low. Um, You know, most totals are set at eight and a half. This thing is down at seven. Now, you talk about, let's start with Jack Flaherty here because – we know he may be on the move. Uh, he's faced the Guardians three times this year. His numbers are impressive. 1.5 ERA. Uh, opposing hand is batting just a buck 75 against him. He's only given up three earned runs in 18 innings. Did allow two home runs against him. Can the Guardians bats get to him the fourth time? I'd like to think after four, the fourth time facing him that they will. Tanner Bybee on the flip side has not been great against Detroit. A 5.06 ERA in three starts, nine runs in 16 innings, and he's given up two bombs himself. Somehow he's also managed to keep the batting average low against the Tigers to 218. But uh, I just, I look at this and go, the fourth time they're facing each other, these two starters faced off last week on July 24th. It was a 2 1 final. The game was also opened at seven and a half. It was bet down to seven. Obviously, the under came in. But I want to flip this here and just say that number's too low. Again, and be cautious if Flaherty does get yanked because he gets traded, guess what? That total is going to go way up. So make sure you put the play as action, not listed pitchers must start. If you feel like this is a route that you want to go, if there's too much variance in it, certainly understand here. But BP and I feel pretty comfortable with the fact that runs will be scored here, especially by Cleveland, who's kind of desperate right now and needs to get back on track. Third time in 19 days that both these guys are facing the other opponent. So over is your show, Best Bet. If you already haven't done so, make sure you click that subscribe button. That way you don't miss any of our exclusive sports betting content here on Wager Talk TV, including that aforementioned appearance I'll be having on first pitch with Drew Martin. Check him out, wt.buzz slash mz, me, wt.buzz slash bp. We will be back Tuesday with this jingle. Maybe I didn't, I didn't, I didn't.
Maybe I, maybe, maybe I need her to like make an appearance back on the show. Turn you kicked around. her out of bed last week. I did. I was very upset with her. Very upset with her. Not, not. I was not happy.